Hey fellows, welcome back to my channel and gals, all my farming friends. Tonight we're going to be taking a look at a couple new mods. Uh, we're going to look at, go into categories, mods. Uh, oh, and I'm going to flash in a picture here. So that, I don't know if you guys remember the forager that I did before the, the uh, review of the John Deere 7180 is actually a real forager. Um, I always thought, you know, maybe it was a mythical beast, but uh, I'm going to insert a couple pictures here. These are two different foragers that I found at a local John Deere dealer. So they are actually selling them in Ohio and people are buying them. Now I think they're using it more for like feeding their animals and stuff like that. But we're going to look at the Don 680. These are Russian models. I believe this is a seventies model that we're going to look at first. And then we're going to also look at this uh, newer, I think this is the eighties model. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about them more. Uh, you've seen them featured in some of my, my Eastern block videos. I'm just going to buy all the pieces here for them. They're essentially the same pieces, just different paint jobs. Um, so what, what we have here, first we're going to look at the, uh, oh, and I should probably buy, do I have any wagons? Let me look around here and see if I got any. Well, I don't think I have any regular tippers, so we'll grab a tip or two while we're here. Um, tipper, I think, eh, we'll just, we'll do this one. This one fits nicely with it. Uh, usually I use a pair of them, but right for the review, we're not going to be putting that much silage in. So you can use up to two of these trailers, uh, and you can also use, uh, I think the biggest one that you can use in a pair is this guy, this Flegel, the 266 Bull. You can use a pair of these together with either of these harvesters. But in real life, you're probably really pushing the horsepower limit of its pulling capabilities. I also don't think, from what I've seen online, um, these forage harvesters are not... Um, Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? They don't use them while pulling trailers. In, in all honesty, in all reality, these forage harvesters are used um, with tractors pulling trailers. So this guy runs down the middle, and a tractor will run alongside of him with a silage wagon just like this. In fact, we can do this. We'll, we'll make this even more uh, prototypical. So in real life, what you would see is one of these tippers. Uh, might be a different brand, but it's going to be this style uh, chaff tipper. I shouldn't say silage. Silage is what comes afterwards, but the chaff is what you're dealing with. Now, if what I'm talking about with these forage harvesters sounds completely French to you, that's because you don't know what a forage harvester is. You need to check out my silage video and how to make silage. I'm going to put a link down here in the description uh, to that video, and that video will explain to you what silage is, why you would forage for silage or for chaff, um, to make silage because it's it's a big way to make money in the game, but um, and it's for real in Europe now in America they just use the chaff to make food for their cows, but um, in Europe they're actually burning it for biofuel, so it's a, it's a money maker. So this is the first model we're going to look at. This is the regular old Don 680. I'm imagining this is an an early 80s, late 70s model. Um, the coloring obviously is different than the paint scheme that's on the newer Don 680 over there. When I went online to research these to see if they were real, because, you know, <laughs> I always question some of these mods. These are both real uh, units. The one over there, the 680M, is still available. You can buy them um, from Russian websites used anywhere from, I think, 10000 was the lowest I saw in bad condition up to around forty to $50,000 in good condition. I would imagine new, they would have been around 100000 which is what they charge you for in the game. It's about 100000 quid in the game. So if we sit in the cockpit here, and these are, I think these are exquisitely done. To be honest with you, a lot of the, the mods that are out there are terrible looking. These actually don't look too bad. Now they've got their bugs to them, but you can see all of this, this gearing down in the bottom there by the pickup unit. This is all operational. It does turn while the unit's running. Um, you'll notice the really cool Russian labeling and stickers. Uh, the turning, uh, I guess it's part of the motor. I would imagine this is a radiator fan or some kind of inlet for air to keep the engine cool, along with these rotating parts. Um, the, the unit does have a trailer. Obviously, this, this moves around the same as the Crone does, the same as the John Deere does. Uh, this is actually a much better looking model than the John Deere. Now, the downside with both of these is they do not get dirty. So this is always going to look like this. It's not going to get dirty, but it's okay. Because of the quality of the model, I'm actually willing to look past the fact that it doesn't get dirty. That doesn't bother me as much. So uh, let's hop inside and look around the cockpit. And here you're going to see these are very basic, you know, controls. This old school, like early 80s radio. The buttons, they all look, well, 
archaic. <laughs> Russian. <laughs> Though American equipment looks like this too from the same era. So no, no offense to the Russians. Uh, one of the cool things I found is that you can open and close the door. I think it's the end key. Yeah, there you go. So while you're working, you can have the door open to stay cool. Uh, sometimes you can get out and exit and the door will stay open. Uh, so the headers that you have with this unit, uh, and we'll, we'll run them each so you can see what they look like. We'll do both. This is the corn header. This is going to chaff up corn. This is the um, pickup unit for, oh my goodness, for um, like the grain. When you have a, a, a harvester that leaves behind the straw swath or you're going to winrow straw, this will pick up straw. This will also pick up grass. So if you've mowed grass and windrowed it, you can pick it up with this unit. And this unit gives you a double to triple bonus, I think. It's like 2.5 times. So you actually get twice as much as you would with a normal pickup trailer. That's why I suggest using this instead of going with a load, like a tractor and one of those pickup trailers. Like, uh, oh, where are they? I think they're under here. Loading wagons. These do not pick up as much. So you'll actually get a bonus for using this unit with the... This unit is designed to increase the amount of chaff that you get. So uh, it is true in reality, too. It actually has a better yield than the loading wagon. So use this to pick up your grass trails. But once again, it's not going to keep it straw, and it's not going to keep it grass. It's going to turn it into chaff, which you're going to use to make silage. This is the mowing unit. You can use this to mow down grass. You can also use it to mow wheat, barley, or canola. So you got your corn. you got your pickup and you've got your cutter. So let's go ahead and run. We'll start with the corn. Actually, we'll start. I want to start with the pickup. So let's do this. We are going to grab our trusty little Sampo Rosenlu, the C6. And we're going to run over here, and we are going to uh, make a straw swath. Now, to enable the straw swath, you're going to use your comma key. So right now it's enabled. If I click the comma key, you'll see a change up on the menu on the left up on the left side, it'll say enable. So right now nothing is gonna come out, but if I if I hit the comma key, it now says disable, which means it's enabled. <laughs> it's kind of backwards, but uh, right now the straw swath is enabled. I'm gonna hire a worker. Oh, <laughs> gotta unfold it first. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna hire a worker. And this guy's gonna run up the field, and you'll see here he's gonna leave a swath of, right there, so he's leaving a pile of stuff for us to pick up. So now let's go back to our harvester. Now, I must note, when using this harvester to pick up pick up trails like what we're doing, like picking up the leftovers, the issue that we're going to have is that, um, let's see, change this over here, is that you have to pull a trailer or you have to have a buddy with you on multiplayer because he will not, you can't hire a worker to pick up a swath like that. So you're going to have to do it with the trailer attached. This is not prototypical. What would really work is having you drive this and then have a buddy come on multiplayer and do the other end of it. Now, what you just saw there, did you see the tractor turn on its own? This is one of the big issues with this particular model. This pickup unit sits too low. And so even though it's up all the way, when I hit bumps, I will get stuck. Very easily this thing gets, see right there? I was just off the ground. So even a little bump like that is going to really make it hard for you to drive this thing. One of the other problems with this mod, here we go, we're going to go up again and I'm off the ground and I'm back on. Uh, one of the issues that I have with this mod is that it does not get good traction. So if you get into a situation where there's a steep hill or maybe a bump, you're going to get stuck. And that's true for both of these, though this one is worse than, than the 680M. So this is, once again, the Don 680 from the 70s. Let's go ahead and turn our... Uh, oops, wrong button. <laughs> I'm holding down the wrong button. All right, so we're going to turn... Oh, I got to select it first. Go and drop it. And we're going to turn it on and we'll drop it, right? Okay, enable it. Uh, oh, no, we have to go back to the main unit now. Turn it on. Or, or, okay. So you can see already, it's, see it's bouncing on the ground. Nice animations, though, but it's a little rough looking, too. It's not exactly a pretty mod. And you can see I'm going full blast here at four miles an hour. So it's one of the slower foragers, but you know what? The price is ridiculously low. Because this is an old unit and it's used, you're buying like a 1970s model. Well, you're going to pay $7,000 for the forager. By far, this is the cheapest forager in the game so far. Uh, and 
the pickup units are only like six to eight hundred dollars. So this thing is dirt cheap. I, you just you can't get any cheaper than this. So I just thought I'd point that out. Th this is absolutely the cheapest way to get into forging in the game. It's even cheaper than the, the unit that goes on the front of the tractor. It's just dirt cheap. Uh, you can see here as we look closer. Oh, oh, it's time for dinner. All the wheels and gears are moving. So that's pretty cool. And even the, the cruncher is moving. <laughs> I will pause that. Going down. Um, so we have a lot of moving parts on this. It's a pretty cool looking model. Um, even on the unit itself, we have. You can see that? That's rolling there, the, the chain drive thing there. So, you know, it's, it's a nicely detailed model, but like I said, there's a couple bugs that are with it. It's not perfect by any means. So while we're doing this, let's go ahead and take a break here, and I'm going to grab the 680M and we'll continue with that. So hopping into the cockpit of the 680M, the first thing you're going to notice is that the, the front top of the unit is completely different. The back might be the same. And the devices, the cooling fan, the, the engine, um, these are all carryovers from the newer model. So I would imagine, you know, like a lot of things that are Russian, if they work, and I've said this in my gameplay, they don't change them. They just keep them the same. Now, they did change the cockpit, though. So it's, I don't know if the M stands for modernization or modern, modern unit, but it's the same exterior except for the cabin. And so if we hop in the cab, whoops, <laughs> wrong button. Uh, you can look around them. We can see that this is a much more modern looking cabin. Um, things have been updated. There's a computer system in here showing us the operation speed and all these other things. Um, different pedals and gear shifters. Everything's marked clearly. The door still opens and closes, though maybe answer the door is X. Hello? Close the door. Answer the door. Hello? <laughs> uh, so let's go ahead and grab our, uh, our part. Uh, this one also has my favorite little flashing beacon on top, so we'll turn that on for safety. <laughs> As uh, Lurt pointed out, I drive around with the uh, beacon on, but I forget to put the forks down, so I'm driving around like, killing people. Another thing that's changed with this model is that, even though it's not super better, they've raised up how high this carries it. So look how high that is off the ground now. That's an improvement because, like, with the old one, obviously, you get stuck even when you have it, quote-unquote, up. It still gets stuck on stuff. This one, you'll see, I don't have any problem getting onto the field. I'm not getting stuck. And the wheels actually look better, too. You know, the whole unit is a little, little more detailed. I think this is by the same author, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, it's just this is a, a much, it's an updated unit. So, but that is definitely a fix that this comes up. Once again, all the gears move and turn. Uh, very nice detailed model. I think the corn header is probably the coolest looking one, and we'll run that on both of these next. But um, yeah, same thing holds for gravity. This thing seems to have a terrible time. Um, with traction problems at times, so you're going to get to the edge of a field to be a little bump, and you will get stuck, and you'll have to come with another tractor and push this out because it won't break loose. So that's unfortunate that that's going on, but these tractors seem to weigh like two pounds. So I'll break the hitch here. Move this guy over. And so the performance is pretty much identical since the unit is, you know, almost the same. Between these two, the performance really is pretty much identical. However, the price is different. Because this is a newer unit, you're looking at $110,000 for the unit. The headers are still reasonable within the six, 600 to 2000 range, I believe. So it's a little more expensive to buy the parts for this, but it's a better looking model, and it's also you know cheaper to, to operate. So there we go. Let's continue where we left off. And so pretty much it's the same thing. Got all of our little moving parts, axles, cables, transaxles, pickups. <laughs> Pretty cool stuff. All right, so we're done with this thing. So we're going to grab the next pickup part so you can see what that does. So I'll be right back. Now, an odd thing happened to me. I thought I should point this out. I tried to load this into my server. Um, we have a, the FarmSum server up now. For those of you that are interested in joining, please email me. And I will give you a password, but it's uh, gamer at rcatpc.com. Uh, look for my video that talks about the release of the server to find out more information. But um, this unit, when you bring it into the server, it just starts flying around in the sky. So for whatever reason, it will not work with the server. <laughs> so, but it's funny because it works on our multiplayer games. Like when I play with Cha and Seth, and I don't, and I'm not using the dedicated server, it's fine. But for whatever reason, when I put it into the dedicated server, 
it just goes bazonkers. So anyway, I thought I'd share that with you. And that's true of both the Don models. I think they're based on the same thing, like I said before. So the programming's bad in one, the programming's bad in both. I don't know why that is. Even here you can see it, see it slipping around. Look at that. Not like this thing doesn't weigh like thousands of pounds. It just slides on the pavement. <laughs> that would never happen in real life. You'd be like, Err. all right, be back. Now, one of the differences between this header and the one for the other unit, you can see this where it has the Russian writing. I'm not sure what it says there on the side and the white. Um, that is actually covering up the gearboxes. You can see them in there. They're still in there, but it covers them up. The other one is exposed. It doesn't have any protection. So they've given this one a little protection. That must be a, one of those modernization things. You can see I'm stuttering a little bit. I got too much equipment in the field. Whoops. <laughs> Rookie mistake. I wasn't paying attention. Busy blabbing away. I'm not looking at where the trailer hitch is. Go back up here. Pick this up. So, yeah, so that's sliding. You can see that's one of the issues that I have with these. So pick this. We're going to turn the unit on. And this is going to cut the grass. See that? It's cutting the grass. And now it's cutting the barley or wheat. But it chaffs it. You don't get wheat. You get chaff. So just remember that. This is going to chaff everything that you run over with. And we're going to cut grass. Oh, look. It's still getting chaff. And now we're in the canola. Oh, now this one doesn't work on canola. Interesting. The Crone Big X's unit will work with canola. So this one must not do canola. Look, I'm sliding. Yeah, that's the problem I'm talking about. That's the header being too low. It's catching. So we can't do canola, but we can do wheat and barley. I think this is wheat and barley. So, we'll move this up. There's the grass. And we'll transition in. There's the wheat. So I can't do canola with this. Interesting. Let's see if the other one does. So there's that. Chopping that up. And we're going to turn this unit off. Or dump the trailer on it. And I'm going to go grab the other one and do the same thing. So we'll do right there. But you can see here, even with the pickup unit up, it's on the ground. That should not be. So something with the pickup unit is broken. It's, it should be higher. This is this is full up. That's just broken. That's not good. If I put it down, it's even worse. It's even lower. Yeah, see that? It lowers it down into the ground. I can't even drive. Look at that. <laughs> so that's buggy. But like I said, it's cheap. So the other attachments work better on this one. You can, if you can get away with, you know, using just mowing the grass and doing the corn, well then it's not a big deal. Do this one, pick it up, and you'll see here. See, now that, that sits just fine. That's fine there. No big deal. Eh, oh well, what are you gonna do? So now we're gonna drive over and pick up our trailer, and we'll try the canola again, see if this will grab that canola. Maybe the 70s is better than the 80s. Alright, so we'll turn this bad boy on. Nope, that's the headlights. Oh, come on. Why want to go on? There we go. <coughs> Alright, so we're weeding it up. And you can see already from just a little bit of work we've done. Pardon me, we've we've turned this into um, over half a load of si of uh, chaff on our wagon. So these things work very quickly, and you, you're going to have to carry two wagons with you because it's just not going to be satisfactory. You're going to you're going to run out of space, and always have to, you're always going to have to be running over to the silage plant. So unless you got some players playing with you that take the loads over while you're doing it, nope, this one won't do it either. Interesting. So no on the canola. All right, so we'll take a look at the corn header, and then we'll run this over to the mill and drop it off so you guys can see what I'm talking about and how to do that portion of it, and we'll be done. All right, so here's the corn header, and you can see on here, uh, it's pretty cool. It's actually a, it's pretty sweet. Now, I'm going to hire a worker here, and you'll see what happens here. So I'm going to, he's going to start, and then he'll just, he'll start moving, and he just, he's just going to wait now. So he's sitting here waiting. You can see the details. Whoops, I hate that when you press the forward. There you go. You can see the details on the choppers. It's hard to get exactly. That's pretty cool. I like those big choppers. My kids are making all kinds of noise. But yeah, a lot of. Look at all. Even inside there, look at all these moving parts. It's pretty cool. 
Very nice model. And this one, like I said, works better than the other one. It still has some of the bugs, but it's better. So let's go ahead and hop in a tractor now, and we'll grab, we'll grab the Bugman. Is the Bugman? So exciting. Okay, so we've got the de Bergman. And we're gonna go, all you gotta do is drive like a maniac. Oh, wrong button. Oh my goodness. Total fail. So we're gonna pull alongside this here. And you can set your cruise control, I don't have it set right now, I'm going to get it set there, to about six miles an hour, and that'll keep up with them. They'll be happy. Oops, I set the zero. There we go. And that'll keep it kosher. And this is prototypical. This is really how they would run this. It's a thrill, isn't it? Uh, and this Bergman trailer is a little bit tall, <laughs> so we may size down a little bit on the tipper as you can see in real life he'd be blowing right into the side of the tipper that's not realistic but that is how they run them in real life you see them running side by side like this so um yeah pretty cool all right so that's it for for this i think uh we'll go ahead and run this down i want to take it down to the, the biogas plant to show you what to do with all this collected chaff but uh you get the idea uh, that is what it does and that's that's the the unit for the the standard 680 is exactly the same as this one. It's going to do the exact same thing. It's brown. <laughs> so, all right. So let's go ahead and run this down to the, the uh, oh my gosh, my brain, the biogas plant. All right. So we're here at the biogas plant and see here, I've dumped a little bit of silage. And once again, I, I would strongly suggest you watch that silage tutorial if you don't understand what we're doing here. But you're going to dump this trailer in. And there's the load that we just picked up. It was very little in there. But what will happen is, once once this fill level, see up there on the left it said fill level at 1%. Once you reach about 12%, uh, you can fill it up as much as you want, but you can you can start the silage process at about 12, I think 11 or 12%. Uh, I'm going to run back and forth over this. And, the, and it should say compacted 100%. See up on the left there where it says compacting 100%. A third option will become available. It's going to say cover or blanket the silo. So once you've reached 12%, you can blanket this thing, and then you'll drive off, and a big white blanket's going to cover it. After about 12 hours, you're going to find this, this dark brown stuff. This is called silage. So your chaff is over there. This one's been covered, and now it's, it's you can see if you look close, it's just basically rotten or fermented chaff. And then... You take a scooper or a conveyor with a trailer, however you want to do it, and you scoop it into these buckets. And if you're playing on any of the modes, it is the most efficient way to make money. You're going to make a bazillion dollars. Even on the hard mode, if you if I filled this up all the way to the top and then blanketed it, so 600,000 kilograms of, of silage or chaff turned into silage, 600,000 kilograms is going to bring me a, a little bit under a million dollars on hard mode so i'm standing on a pile right here this pile on easy mode we're looking at about three million dollars of chaff right here um it just it's mind-boggling how much money you make so anyway that's once again that's what these these forage harvesters are for they're for making money basically the other thing that you can use that silage for is to feed your cows so if you're in the cow if you're into growing cows or pigs or sheep or whatever you can you can use that to feed the cows, and it makes you, you mix that in with the hay bales and grass, and it, you have very happy cows in the end. So, anyway, I hope this uh, review helped you out. And once again, you get to see these two forge harvesters operating. Um, they are available from modhub.us. Once again, I can't host these on my site because I found out that there's a lot of people saying, please don't relink these files. So they don't want us relinking them to other sites. So I'm no longer hosting these on my website, but they are available for download at modhub.us and it's ad free and once again <coughs> i'll put that link down there too um these uh both the 680 and the 680m all you have to do is do a search for them say type in 680m and it'll come bring this right up and you'll be able to download it so anyway guys i hope that was a help to you uh, have a great night and i will see you around the farm
be sure to subscribe.